Don't worry. Now I'm in the group. You got no. <laughs> warm up. I was always best at warm up, mate. Always. You know? I was always at my peak at warm up. So my, uh, some of my questions have changed a bit because there's this uh, exciting news and changes in the academy yeah. coaching lineup. Can you tell us about that? What the changes are? Yes. Um, we have uh, had some changes throughout the summer. Kev Betsy, Dan Machichi uh, leaving to Crawley Town, which is a fantastic opportunity for them. I want to give them my props and thank them for uh, an amazing journey and for leaving the academy in a better place than it was. Um, but, you know, then we had to make some decisions and changes and they come into place from today that Mehmet Ali will take on the role as head under 21's coach and PDP lead. So he is making a promotion from being an assistant coach to that role and then Obviously, the exciting news about bringing in back Jack Wilshere into the club um, to be our under-18 head coach, which is super, super news for us and super exciting. Yeah, what, what, what's so special about Jack? Obviously, you played with him. Yes. And he was, he was training with you uh, the first thing for us. Yes, I mean, he just retired, you know, from his playing career, uh, which is amazing. I was part of that. I was really lucky to play with a super talented boy that has been you know, promoted from the academy to the first team and has, a, has had a major career. So to get him to coach our youngsters now is a brilliant story. And what I've seen from him in six months and coaching the, the boys in the academy and his connection to the staff, to the players, it's been amazing. So I was on to him and, um, you know, kind of got him into a position where he re would retire for that kind of new job for him. You made him retire. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't go that deep and that far. Uh, obviously, he had a fantastic career, uh, and even at age of 30, he probably played almost 14, 15 years, you know, of professional football. Obviously, he started really early, um, and he was promoted to the first team fairly early, 15, 16, 17 years of age. So he had a um, good career in professional football. So. Yeah, and, and I felt something within him, you know, when he kept himself fit within the first team. He then started to, you know, train the boys at Colney, at Hayland, really got into it, got his A license done. Um, and ever since then, uh, we were in touch and, you know, he we went to Denmark. And when he came back, this opportunity is on the table because two members of staff, two coaches leaving us. So. I stayed on the case with him. We had a lot of com uh, conversations that um, I would make sure I'll support him, you know, with his first coaching experience. But um, he's very keen, eager to learn, and want to make a difference for us in the football club. So I'm, I'm really pleased. Apart from those qualifications, how important is it to have someone has the DNA, the love of the club, has also come through that whole Hale yeah. and Academy system. It's super important, you know, for us to to keep that DNA. Um, and within the 18s, we have Jack Wilshere, Adam Birchill, Julian Gray, three coaches who have, you know, experienced the whole journey. And obviously, Jack being the under 18 head coach, you know, he has, um, you know, Arsenal is in him, you know, and he wants us to do, to do well. But he understands that having a playing career is different to a coaching career. Um, but by revealing the news today to staff, players, a lot of smiling faces and to see him speaking in front of the players, I was really proud this morning, you know, because it is a different ball game, you know, to want to make a difference for the boys. But I guess he has learned a lot throughout his career, you know, the mistakes he made, you know, the good part of it, you know, the disappointing things like injuries, like not returning as quick as you want to be. All these things are, are, are major considerations for us and to bring someone in like, like Jack is, is amazing. Yeah, I mean, how has he changed? Can you could you imagine yeah. celebrating those cup <laughs> finals with Tottenham Yeah, probably not. Yeah. yeah, probably not. And even if when we played together, it was it's a different environment. Um, but the transition from playing to coaching or whatever is not easy for every single footballer. And I was fortunate that I had a person, a mentor like Arsen Wenger to trust me with that next step. Um, now I, I'm in a position where I can give opportunities and chances to, to players who want to are willing to, to make that step and to make that happen for Jack, you know, makes makes us really proud as a club. How did you find that change? Because you, yeah. I mean, you were playing cup finals and, <laughs> and Arsenal's been yeah. here, and next year the head of the youth. Yeah, 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 I don't know. I, I didn't know. 
you know I, I didn't know you are just assuming that you might have a chance because you know your mentality you wanted to do the right thing wanted to do you know you can transfer bits and pieces you know into into every job that kind of help you throughout your career however you, you have to learn to, to man manage to work with people to academies are you know like they're well staffed now so you gotta you gotta learn quickly the rules and regulations and that has uh, still to this day I'm, I'm still learning every day um, but the decision to give Jack the job has got so many positive aspects we by saying Edu, Mikel, myself, we were so much, you know, involved into the process. We want to make it work. We want to help him. We want to support him, and the support staff, you know, in the academy, um, the head of coaching, Luke Hobbs, they, they were fantastic throughout the process because they want to make it happen. They know how powerful it is, but they know how much support you will need as well. And everyone is kind of will will sacrifice, you know, for for Jack being a success. It's, it's a real sort of uh, race is it, to attract the best young players from, from all over the world. And how how much yeah. will it help have a sort of figure or a person like Jack on board with himself yeah. and Mikel and Yeah, it will help, you know, we, because the good thing is Jack has worked under Mikel as well, you know, throughout, throughout this, this six month with us. So he knows the messages, he knows the playing style, he knows what to do, he, he has got the history and Jack gets it, you know, what we are about. So him speaking to our top talents to new recruits, to our under eights, under eight parents, you know, he will give them a good perspective on what we are about. So we'll use him in multiple assets and he is ready for it. He knows that, you know, as a, as a football player, you might have a nice day from 10 to two, four hours, you know, that's done. As a coach, being a member of the academy, these days are gone, you know, the, the hard work and the graft, making it happen for other people and to organize and delegate. You know, will be a major part of his next, hopefully, three, four years with us. And you mentioned the Callum Edu. In terms of sort of day to day working relationships, yeah. how much of your job sort of intertwined in the company? Yeah, we'll come into touch every now and then. Obviously, um, in pre season, it's very hectic at the moment. You know, first team just returned back from, from the Germany tour, off to the next one to the US. So, but today I've seen Mikel three times already, you know, because not only that he wanted to know about um, about Jack and how it worked and how the communication worked with the play with the with the players and with the staff, but he then says to me, "I want to see Jack today." S sent him down, you know. I want to want to congratulate him. I want to introduce him. Um, and the lineman needs to continue. It's not only, you know, on a day on a given day. We have regular catch-ups um, and then Edu comes into the mix as a technical director and he needs to be up to date. So it's our job to make it work, but the relationships that we have help massively. So, so is everyone back now? The new signings, the guys being on loan? And yeah, happen? almost. I mean, the international players, I think they've all come back today, basically. <laughs> so yeah, it will be a full squad you know, of, of players at the moment. So there will be definitely movements happening throughout this transfer window which we which needs to happen you know to to get our youngsters opportunities because at the moment we have a big squad um so yeah i i, ex, I expect a lot of things to to be happening throughout the summer interesting so and with five substitutes in the Premier League, yeah you need a big squad right? you need a big sport squad uh europe thursday sundays um it will be a tough season for us but on our level we 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 will compete and that's the and that's the good thing about it we we'll, we feel like we can compete even further last year yeah was a was an opportunity that we might miss at the end but at the start of the season it looked completely different you know in terms of the first three games however we we gave ourselves the best possible chance didn't make it in the champions league at the end of the day however it feels like there's a real you know movement towards the champions league and the new signings one in particular, you know, makes people feel like, yeah, this is the ambition of the club, you know, yeah. to to sign marquee players who can contribute goals. I guess the, the most eye-catching one is that Gabriel Jesus who scored yeah. on his debut, did he, in Germany? Have you got to see him? And what, what sort of impact is he having on the club? Yeah, I think, first and foremost, he decided fairly quickly, you know, on Arsenal. I mean, that says a lot about Edu Mikel and our recruitment strategy to to kind of identify and then trying to be proactive, you know, not waiting, you know, until the end of August, basically, <laughs> you know, we have had those summers as well. This means he's part of that first preseason game against Nuremberg and can, you know, connect with the, with the players. 
the best players they connect really quickly with other players and you could could instantly see that you know once you have a marquee player who understands football they connect fairly quickly with the rest of the group apart from getting the big names and the stars that obviously excites the fans how much is it that when you talk about the sort of the connectivity between yeah. the right characters personalities major major um obviously want to sign robust players and hopefully stay injury free throughout the whole year uh, Gabriel Jesus shows that um, but as well then you know we have fairly a, a squad that is in transition you know to, to achieve big things in terms of the age um, but it feels like this squad will mature you know immensely you know with the next couple of seasons plus getting Gabriel Jesus in you know that's that's a winner you know who has won trophy so he'll bring something to the DNA you know that we haven't seen for a long time I guess you mentioned another player earlier who's come back, William Saliba. Yeah. Will Mikel say to you, come on, player, you're a centre. <laughs> Should I be playing this guy? How is that going to work? Um, it doesn't work like that. In particular, however, you know, what William has done, you know, in France, in Marseille, is, is magnificent. So for us to, you know, really test him this summer and see what's best for him. But he has clearly made his mark, mark with, with, his, with his young age, you know, with his playing in a major league in Europe. And uh, being one of the best players says it all. So why not use it? Yeah, well, that's down, down to the boss, I guess. Exactly. So um, 